device that which helps detect and measure the distance of any nearby uh, objects without any physical pointer. So this is basically the proximity distance. Okay. So the maximum distance uh, that a proximity sensor uh, that can detect. So that is uh, called as actually nominal range. Okay, the nominal range. So proximity sensors basically, you know, application. There are so many applications. You know, household from household to you know, uh, you know, wide range of application, industrial application that is uh, it is widely used for proximity sensors nowadays. So basically, uh, it is in monitoring, you know, the uh, and machine vibrations. Okay, to measure the variation, you know, distance between the shaft and uh, you know uh, any support uh, bearings okay so so this is very common you know in a large uh, steam turbines uh, compressor motors okay they are widely used in general you know industrial uh, automation such as uh, conveyor belts you know if you visit an industry so you can see the conveyor lines the conveyor belt jam detection purpose okay counting purpose in food counting process okay uh, safety interlock uh, safety interlock uh, system. So, so there are so many, you know, there is an industrial widely used in the industry. Okay. Uh, proximity sensors. In our daily life that we are using in a mobile phone, okay, the, that it consists of the IR technology. Okay, so in the mobile phone, at the top of the phone, that is the proximity sensor is the mounted in the mobile phone. You know, parking sensor, car parking sensor. So that is uh, the proximity sensor. The proximity sensor that is used. So in our daily life also, we are using, we're dealing with the uh, so many proximity sensors. So many optical proximity sensors. So there's a types, basically capacity proximity sensors, you know, inductive uh, proximity sensors, you know, optical proximity sensors, you know, hall effect proximity sensors. Okay, so there are there are different different you know applications. Okay. So what are the features actually? The features that I have you know highlighted. Uh, first one is that uh, is a very special features that is a contactless uh, sensor. So you know that contactless sensing means you know allows for uh, detection without uh, you know touching the object. So that is the contactless uh, sensor. Next one is that the unaffected is not affected by the surface uh, conditions. Okay. So basically, the proximity sensors, uh, you know, uh, nearly not affected by any surface colors of the objects. Uh, basically, see, it mainly, you know, detects the only the physical changes. Okay, it detects only the physical changes, right? So next one is the suitability for a wide range of you know, applications. Just, uh, just now I have uh, I have just said a wide range of applications. You know, it is uh, suitable for uh, you know damp conditions also. You know, wide temperature range uses. Okay, uh, unlike uh, other traditional uh, optical detection. Okay, and uh, I just now I have said that is applicable in your phone. Okay, uh, maybe your Android phone, iOS device, whatever. So it consists of you know simple. Simple IR technology. Simple IR technology. Okay. So actually, what is happening there? You know that uh, phone is switch on off display according to your users. Okay. So that is a proximity sensor because of the proximity sensors. Okay. Because it turn off uh, your display when the phone call is ongoing. We know that when the phone call is ongoing, that turn off your display. Okay. So such that you would not accidentally activate to so something uh, while placing it near your uh, it, uh, near your uh, chips. Okay. So so that is uh, you know the you know, switching for the wide range of application, thus where the proximity sensor is installed, the mounted to your know, mobile phones, okay, the smartphone. Okay. So uh, next is the long service line. Okay, long service line. The long service line means you know that actually it is a non-contact uh, device, contactless device. So there is no any moving part. There is no any moving parts is there. Okay. So that's why the service life, you know, here yeah, tends to be you know longer as compared to the other you know uh, uh, traditional services. Okay. So that is a longer service. Line. Okay. So that is the contactless device. So there is no any moving parts. So basically, that's why the service life tends to be longer as uh, tends to be longer as compared to any traditional services. Okay. 
Next one is the high speed, you know, response rate. Another features high speed uh, response rate. So basically, you know that uh, in the compared to the switches, where uh, switches means uh, the contact is required, you know, for sensing. Okay, uh, but in the proximity sensors, it does not require for that. So it's offer a you know higher speed, you know, response, uh, higher speed of response. Rate. So these are the special uh, features. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So five uh, features the proximity sensors have. One is that uh, contactless sensing. Second one is that you know unaffected by any surface conditions. Third one is that you know suitability for a wide range of applications. Fourth one is that you know longer service life. And uh, fifth one is that high speed response. <laughs> so this is the proximity sensors. That is you know advantage. You may say that it is a feature or advantage and as application applications and the next uh, if you move to the classification mostly important that is you know capacitive and uh, you know inductive type proximity sensors okay capacitive and inductive type proximity sensors and uh, except the capacitive inductive proximity sensors other proximity sensors also that that is the optical proximity sensors you know hall effect proximity sensors okay another you know that is the ultrasonic proximity sensors ultrasonic proximity sensors okay. there are five types of proximity sensors okay. So uh, this is the you know image that is of you know the inductive uh, proximity uh, sensors. This is the image of the inductive proximity because what is actually the you know inductive proximity sensors? Okay. So basically, see the structure, see the image, see the image clearly. So basically, the inductive proximity sensors is uh, we know that it is a contactless uh, sensors device. Okay. And uh, that is uh, used to only detect the inductive proximity sensors. Basically, used to only detect the metal objects. Okay, only the metal objects. Okay, it is used to only detect the metal objects, right? And it is the based on basically the law of induction. Okay, law of induction. Law of induction driving a coil. Okay, with an oscillator. Okay, once the metallic object approach. When the metallic object approach it. Okay, so basically this is the inductive sensor, inductive proximity sensor that consists of one the you know, inductive pulse followed by the oscillator electronics with trigger circuits, output switching circuits. Okay, and which one is the target? Target the device is this is your target. Okay? This is your target. This is the target or object. Okay, so you have to vary this object. You have to vary this object. You have to you know change the distance of the object. So accordingly, you can take the several readings in the laboratory. Experiments. Okay. So actually, what is happened? Basically, it's very simple operation. You know, alternating current first is supplied to the inductive coil. Okay, alternating current was supplied to the inductive coil, and generating here, you know, electromagnetic uh, detection field. Okay, it's generating the electromagnetic detection uh, field. So when this metal object, this suppose the metal object. Okay, basically when it comes very closer, you know, very comes closer into this magnetic field. Okay, very comes closer. In into this magnetic field, then what will happen? It builds a eddy current. Okay, it builds a eddy current and results in the coil induction changes. Okay, so alternating current first you have to supply in the coil to so generating the electromagnetic detection field. So when this object, this metallic object, is comes very closer. Okay, so comes very closer. Okay, so comes means it is a contactless device, touchless device. It does not contact, but when it comes, then it will automatically sense. Okay, when this metal object is comes very closer into this you know magnetic field, then what will happen? It automatically builds the uh, inside it the uh, eddy currents. Okay, and results in the coil induction changes. So when the coil induction changes, then what will happen? The circuit that has been continuously monitoring will trigger the you know the sensors output switch, output switches. Okay, means here the oscillator circuits is there, oscillators is there. Okay, oscillators changes because the oscillators because you know that uh, when this magnetic field is produced, when the magnetic field is produced. Okay, so. So what then? What will happen? Because in the inactive pulse, okay. So it is ID current when generates the.
eddy current wheels eddy current it flows through the circuits okay so, uh, as a result you may say that the flux around this coil you know some electric by magnetic flux this around this coil that is reduced okay it is reduced with a consequent reduction you know of this uh, induction uh, inductance uh, of this coil okay so basically this effect uh, you know depends on the distance between this target and this coil okay this effect basically depends between this target and this coil okay so because the nearer the target So what is the operation? Nearer the target to the coil, the higher the eddy currents. Okay, and lower the inductance, vice versa. Okay, so if the tar target is very near to the coil, that means eddy current will become higher. Okay, if the target is you know too far from the target uh, from this sensor, then what will happen? Then a small mm -hmm. amount of small amount of eddy current will be generated. A small amount of eddy current will be generated. Okay. so this is the actually the you know the the basic uh, you know basic workings uh, of this you know inductive type you know proximity sensors okay and this inductive type you know proximity sensors basically you know common uses uh, industrial you know production automation machines okay the inductive proximity sensor that is used in a production automation machines so basically that counts the products okay that counts basically the products or uh, uh, and uh, detection of you know where if you uh, see in other application like some uh, uh, detection of any metal of this because okay suppose a bridge is there uh, this is a capacitor so this is a bridge is there okay. there is one bridge uh, there is one bridge circuit uh, this is your uh, circuit that okay. goes down first goes uh, to resistance okay goes to resistance to the bridge circuit okay so now what will happen this is a two capacitors so one capacitor and two capacitors now what will you do the two you know uh, the coils okay basically the, these coils that two coils okay there are two coils inductive coils okay the two inductive coils basically one acts as a active coil this one's first suppose uh, first coil this first coil is a active coil okay and this second coil this second coil that is uh, suppose acts for balancing purpose okay for temperature you know for balancing purpose so these two coils actually connected it has to be connected with these two capacitors that forming the two arms of the bridge okay so suppose i am connecting uh, here the you know uh i'm connecting this uh, these two coils these two coils uh parallel connection parallel connect parallelly connected for uh, with the capacitors parallelly connected you know with the capacitors okay this one and uh, from this uh, this line this to this one okay this one okay and so this is your the you know detector this is the detector this is the detector this is the detector and this will uh, this has to be support this is Okay, okay, fine. So actually, the circuit is looks like that. So uh, the this probe actually consists of the you know, two inductive coils. This is the first coil, and uh, you know this is the second coils. So first coil acts as an uh, it is acts as an one active coil that measurements purpose for measurement purpose, and this second coil you know uh, acts for the balancing purpose. You know for temperature compensation purpose, right? So now actually, what will happen? So distance between the target, distance between the target and the probe this is your target okay this is your target or object distance you know between this uh, distance this distance between this uh, target and the probe this distance okay this distance determines the inductance in the additive coil okay determines the inductance in the active coil okay so now if we connect here some uh, other signal conditioning element so like uh, suppose this is your uh, psd psd you know that is a phase sensitive detector this is a phase sensitive detector okay and the next one is the suppose in a filter okay uh, because it's a filter that is suppose it is your uh, low pass filter there is a low pass filter okay this is a low pass filter and this is the uh, indicating matrix and this is your indicating matrix right so actually when the bridge is balanced when the bridge is balanced so any uh, displacement of this target you know any displacement of this target causes you know the bridge unbalanced the bridge unbalanced so produce some voltage to the bridge produce some voltage that is proportional to the target displacement okay so target displacement is the target some you know displacement kar raha hai na nearer to the you know with uh, the it is in the in the probe so kya hoga so automatically the voltage will be generated so voltage will be generated that voltage that will be output will be proportional into the displacement 
Okay. So now this unbalanced bridge, now what we have to do? This unbalanced bridge has to be demodulated. Okay. This unbalanced bridge has to be demodulated. Okay. That is with the face sensitive detector. Face sensitive detector. Okay. And low pass filter followed by this low pass filter. What is the need of this low pass filter? You know, suppose we are serving noise, you know, so, so how to eliminate the noise. So you have to use the low pass filters. Okay. You have to use the low pass filter. You know, to produce, it can produce the DC output voltage. Okay. It can DC output voltage. Okay. So now this can be calibrated. This can be calibrated here to this indicating meter. Okay. So to indicate the, you know, extra, to indicate the extent of this target displacement. Okay. So this is actually, you know, practical, uh, practical setup. Uh, when, you, when you do the experiments, when you perform these experiments, okay. So you will facing, you will be facing this type of circuits. Okay. So you have to take the several readings, you know, you have to change this displacement accordingly that you have to measure the inductance from the active coil and as well as you have to measure the voltage, voltage that is proportional to be proportional to this displacement. You have to take the several readings in the voltage. Okay. So now that can be calibrated directly here to this indicating meter, to this indicating meter, okay, to indicate the extent of the uh, uh, target. Okay. So this is all about, you know, that is a uh, inductive uh, proximity sensors. Clear? Inductive proximity sensors? Clear? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay. So this is the several advantages and disadvantages also that I have mentioned. The advantages of inductive proximity sensors, you know, that is the contact case connection, environmental adaptivity, okay, the standard to come on the condition seen in the industrial area, such as dust standard, capable and versatile in metal sensing, considerably less cheap when it comes uh, to the price. Okay. There is a no moving parts ensuring the longer service life. So these are common advantages. Disadvantages, you know, that is a lack in the detection range, detection range because uh, depends on nominal range okay so average maximum range up to you know 80 millimeters okay you have to say 80 millimeters maybe above the 80 millimeters between 100 to 80 millimeters maybe like that okay so can only detect only the metal objects so performance you know can be you know affected by some external condition also like the extreme temperature you know for the extreme temperature so performance can be affected okay. so these are the actually the several advantages you know disadvantages of these you know inactive proximity sensors and uh, next one is the Capacity proximity sensor. What is the capacity proximity sensor? Okay. So uh, see the diagram very carefully in the case of the capacity proximity sensors also. So capacity proximity sensors actually, you know that you know that what is the capacitor? Capacitor, you know that basically the two parallel plates are there. So two parallel plates are there. Okay. So actually, actually, what is happening here in the capacity proximity sensors? The first, you see that the capacity proximity sensor are consists of one oscillator, same figure circuits and output switching device, and there is a target. Okay, the same thing, same management is there. Okay, so the capacity proximity sensors, we know that there are two plates, uh, you know, there is a two parallel plates, two parallel plates, one plate and another plate, two parallel plates. So here the first plate acts as a, you know, internal plate, okay, and another plate acts as an external plate. So this is your internal plate and this is your, suppose, the external plate, okay. So this internal plate, you can see this diagram, this internal plate actually, that is connected to the oscillators followed by the triggering circuit followed by the output switching device. And the external plate, what is the need of this external plate that is used as a sensing surface? This is what the sensing surface, okay. So this is actually the sensing surface, okay. And this is the target. So this plate, this one plate acts as a sensing surface and this one plate acts as a, you know, that is a uh, connected internal plate, uh, inner plate, so that is connected to the oscillators and you know electronic circuits, connected to electronic circuits. Okay. So these two parallel plates. So what is the operation? Uh, operation is there. So capacitive proximity sensors uh, basically, you know, uh, one these are also contactor sensors, and but detect both the metallic and you know non-metallic objects. Okay. So including some liquid powders, whatever. Okay. So this is the advantage. Both metallic and non-metallic objects uh, it will detect liquid powders, cellular, whatever. Okay. And it operates by detecting a change in capacitance, the same change in the capacitance. In the previous case, what I have seen is a change in inductance. So in the, in the change in capacitance, okay, change in capacitance. So capacity proximity sensors actually uh, produce the electrostatic field. You know that the capacity proximity sensor that produces basically the electrostatic uh, field. You know, in a suppose the electrostatic field, okay, it produces the electrostatic field. So when the object is basically comes, uh, you know, approach the sensing area, then what will happen? 
happen the capacitance of the both the plates okay the capacitance of the both the plates increase so capacitance of the both the plates increase and resulting in the oscillator amplitude gain okay so the, that means in the amplitude gain the amplitude will become high amplitude will become high then it will start oscillating it will start the oscillating okay so now the resultant amplitude gain triggers that triggers the sensor output switch resultant amplitude gain that triggers the sensor output switch so that means what when the object nears the sensing area then what will happen it enters into the electrostatic field same like inductive transducers it enters into the electrostatic field okay so now changes in the capacitance changes in the capacitance in the both the plates okay so because the capacitive sensors as the capacitive sensors is attached with the oscillator so oscillators will begin oscillating oscillators begin oscillating now what is the function of this trigger circuit trigger circuit reads the amplitude of the oscillations Okay, reaches the amplitude of the oscillation. So when it reaches specific level, the output state of this sensor changes. Okay, the output sense change of the sensor. That is the main uh, block diagram. You know, working. You know, of the capacitive proximity sensors. So if we see in the diagram, if we see in the uh, block diagram, suppose if we uh, want to plot the is uh, waveform. So it is look like that. Suppose this is the you know amplitude. Okay, oscillations y-axis. This is the oscillations amplitude. Okay, and this is the x. axis if we plot uh, suppose this is your target or object target or object okay so uh, when the target when the target uh, uh, when the target is very you know very far to the you know to the uh, sensing area okay so that means there is no oscillations there is no oscillations okay so when it nears or uh, it it is very near to the sensing surface then what will happen the check capacitance changes and the oscillator will start oscillating okay oscillator will start oscillating right so when again Okay, again, it is uh, it is taken away from the you know sensing surface from long distance. Okay, so then what will happen? Oscillator will not uh, start oscillating. So it is to become simple straight line. So no oscillations, no amplitude variation, no amplitude variation will be there. Okay, so in this area, so we can see that we can tell that this is the sensing area. Okay, so this is actually the target present in this area. The target present, and in this area, the target is absent. In this both of these areas, the target is absent. And middle in portion, the target is present. Okay, so thus we can plot the waveform. Also, we can see for the function generator the uh, the waveform uh, from the displacement. Okay, uh, actual displacement. So we can plot the uh, capacitance, you know, oscillating waveform. Okay, we can see, we can see, we can analyze it. Okay, in the practical. So this is the basically the you know working uh, of this uh, capacitive proximity uh, capacitive proximity sensors. Okay, and industrial uses that is uh, like industrial uh, you know inductive proximity sensors that is uh, you. for the production automation machines it also the used to count the you know products so you know it is used also the you know uh, filling process okay pipelines okay fluid level uh, you know composition and pressure measurement so this is there are so many industrial uses the this capacity proximity sensor is used okay for uh, moisture control also you can, uh, you can control the moisture to the capacity proximity sensors so there are various you know wide applications of the inductive uh, you know capacity uh, proximity sensors okay and uh, this is the advantages and uh, you know disadvantages that is like you know inductive proximity sensors that is your conductless radiations by you know array of the materials that uh, able to be detected able to you know detect objects uh, you know through the non metallic walls it's wide sensitivity band and uh, well suited to be used in industrial environment uh, you know contains uh, a potentiometer that allows uh, you know users to adjust the sensor in sensitivity okay so there is no moving parts in the common application so that's that's why that it ensures a, uh, you know long service life disadvantage is a uh, is Relatively low range, you know, through incremental increases for the inductive circuit sensors. Okay, so high price as compared. Ah, it is a high price capacity proximity sensor. There is a high price. Okay, you know, as compared to the inductive, uh, see inductive sensors. Okay, so this is the all about the you know inductive capacity proximity sensor. Is it clear the capacity proximity sensors? Clear. Okay, so this is actually the basic difference, you know, by, by basically important, uh, the important capacity for inductive proximity sensors. So other than the, the capacity for inductive proximity sensors, there are uh, another proximity sensors that is the optical type proximity sensors. Okay. So optical type proximity sensor is something like different because here 
we have to use some transmitters some light sensors okay some detectors uh, uh, you have to use uh, for the optical proximity sensors okay so uh, i have not uh, shown in the in the slide uh, with the optical proximity sensors because it is not much important but uh, i am just showing the diagram basic ground diagram what is uh, look like the optical proximity sensors okay so uh, let me first draw suppose uh, this is your you know uh, first block uh, first block actually represents you know pulse generator okay that is a pulse generator pulse generator and uh, so another uh, elements there suppose is a light source another element suppose it is a light source suppose you may take the uh, led uh, or uh, you know lasers some optical sources you have to use some optical sources led lasers and here the suppose a photo transistor you know suppose detected is there i detected suppose here the you know photo transistor okay is so here uh, your photo transistors okay. and uh, you know this is your target okay. this is your target or object this is your target or object okay. so actually here the dc supply you are giving some here uh, you know dc supply okay. some dc supply so it comes to the pulse generator then you can uh, let uh, drive it and then uh, this is the light transmitted you know so this is the something is connected to the receivers and then it will come to the you know uh, control this is the control circuitry is there what is the control circuitry this is known as actually uh, control circuitry okay control circuitry and then you will be getting the dc output so actually what is happening here there is a simple block diagram it consists of you know first uh, it is the led okay this is the led optical box sensors first uh, is the light source what is the that that means it detects you know you know detects in sense that it takes the light okay um, uh, it transmits the light basically led means transmits the light okay and one is the uh, sensor is there that is a photo transistor you can use or you can use another optical detector like pn photo detector or you know pin photo detector whatever so basically it detects the light reflected you know from the target okay so led generates the light so led generates the light led on laser you can use here okay so uh, what is happening here actually uh, this is very simple applications you know basically uh, you know when the light is uh, any transmits the light when it transmits the light there is a sensing object there is a sensing object okay so light is you know get reflected from the sensing object okay that is reflected from the sensing object and uh, it is sent back to the you know the optical detectors okay we send back to the optical detectors optical detectors okay so that you can vary this distance also you can vary the distance also so according to that you know this range Uh, will vary okay so the signal will vary okay so you can take the you know several readings based on this you know moving uh, of this uh, this uh, sensor this sensor or target this is a sensor target okay and so next what will happen it comes to the uh, control circuitry so control circuitry basically function is that basically it balance the, you know the amplitude okay it balance the signal amplitude means match the uh, pulse frequency uh, of this uh, you know pulse frequency transmitter with the light sensor okay balance actually match the pulse frequency of the transmitter with the you know light sensors okay. so that is the actually uh, function of this you know control circuit control circuit fine so next after that uh, the final output so then you will be getting in that uh, output voltage you know this output voltage will be getting so now this dc output voltage uh, you may say that that is proportional uh, to the displacement of this you know sensing area sensing area so the sensing area jitna vary karenge accordingly that you will be getting some displacement voltage and to actually uh, to be uh, to improve you know some uh, better you know output uh, voltage to have you know better output voltage so that's why the control circuit uh, this uh, block actually is required uh, basically it match the pulse frequency transmitter okay so then you will be getting the better reading okay you get some better reading you can take the better reading okay so there will be some no noise and no, no other variations or disturbance will be there okay so uh, so this is the basically the optical proximity sensors okay so these are so several advantages you know that uh, small in size you know first switching actions okay and you know that is the not you know sensitive any vibration and uh, shock okay so these are the several advantages and you know application is that the same that is a uh, application you know fluid level control uh, fluid level level sensing applications suppose solids uh, you know
know, grains, suppose there are bulk materials, some level applications it is used, optical proximity sensors. Okay. Security and safety uh, purpose it is used for uh, optical proximity sensors. Suppose any, you know, collision prevention. Okay. Suppose in our car parking, you know, our car parking sensors, maybe some optical, uh, you know, uh, some uh, in the backside, optical proximity sensors may be mounted. Okay. So there is some to prevent any collisions, to prevent any collisions. So they are the optical proximity sensors are uh, used. Okay. Some color sensing application, you know, some color sensing application. You know, jam detection also, like electric proximity sensor, also optical proximity sensor may be used in the jam detection purpose, you know, convenient band. Uh, so there is a various application, you know, optical proximity sensor. So all the proximity sensor based on the same principles, you know, one, uh, there should be all sensing area and there should be all displacement, you know, about target. So you have to vary the target under certain distance. So accordingly, you will be getting the output. Okay. Some inductance, if you use some inductive proximity sensor, they change in inductance. If you use the capacity proximity sensors, the change in the capacitance and the coils. In case of the optical proximity sensors, obviously, so they have the change in the detection level. Okay, the number of power detectors, you know, uh, electric signals, you know, electric, because they are getting the electric signals because light, optical signals, basically, it, it transmits the light, it generates the optical signals, and uh, detector function is that convert the optical signals to an electrical, to electrical signals. Okay, so that's why that we are getting some electrical voltage, you know, detector, uh, okay, so that will be changes. So that is all the uh, follows us all the sensors for the same, uh, same principle, same method, same method. But different, different, you know, arrangement is the different, arrangement is different. Okay. So advantage is uh, more or less same, the application is more or less, uh, more or less, uh, like same. Okay. So this is all about the proximity sensors. I think that all of you have uh, understood the basic idea of the proximity sensor. Is it clear? The, all the classification of the proximity sensors. Is it clear? Yes. yes. So, okay. Yes. Okay. So this is the optical power. This is the proximity proximity. Hall effect proximity sensor is not important. Uh, don't need to study the Hall effect proximity sensors. Okay. Only the inductive capacity and uh, optical proximity sensors. Okay. So, <laughs> fine. So optical proximity sensors is over. This topic is over. Uh, so next day we'll start the another topics. So okay. Just uh, for information that next day I will uh, take on quiz test Monday. Okay. Uh, I will take a quiz test on Monday. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, based on the temperature sensors, pressure sensors, uh, uh, you know, force sensors. Okay, topic is that you know manometers, bellows, boron tubes, diaphragms, uh, and uh, strain gauge, uh, and uh, arcade thermistors, thermocouples, and uh, and this proximity sensor. So this proximity sensor. Okay. So next Monday I will take a quiz test. That is ten mark quiz test. Uh, that is a uh, MCQ based questions I will give. Okay. Uh, this is the first quiz test. The second quiz test after after mid semester we will take the second quiz test. So there will be some subjective. Okay. So this quiz test will be based on the MCQ. Okay. Only MCQ. Okay. Only ten questions. One into ten. Ten marks. Okay. So uh, please uh, respond your roll call. Roll number one. Roll number two. Roll number three. Number four. Okay. Present, okay. Sir. Seven. Present, sir. Seven. 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 Fourteen present, 19, sir. Twenty present, sir. Twenty-one. Twenty present, sir. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-three present, sir.